Please don't knock that over. For all so you get tired, please, please stand up. Um, so today we're going to go over fire dynamics. Is fire dynamics important? And that's depends on who you ask. Some people would say it's not that important. Put the put the wet stuff on the red stuff. And it really doesn't matter how important it is to you, because if McGarry's on the nozzle and Phillips is his heel, his understanding of how to put water on the fire, it matters to him and it matters to his kids. He's not going to get him killed because he doesn't know what he's doing. It matters. If we go in blindly and put water on the fire, put the wet stuff on the red stuff, we're getting lucky. I know, show of hands, how many people have went into a fire with zero visibility, no personal size of down the building, no idea where the fire is, went to the fire and put it out? In a show of hands, I'm, I'm definitely one of them. That is, that is getting lucky. That's how, the first 10 years of my experience, that's how we fought fire. You put on your mask, you went in the front door every single time, and you just grabbed the wall and you started going until it got hot and you put water on the fire. That is getting lucky. You are crawling through a bath of, of explosive smoke, right? So can we get lucky a lot? Yes, we can. But let's not confuse success with not failing. So we didn't fail. We can't say that that was successful just because we didn't fail a lot often. Because there's a lot of guys who are not alive today that did fail doing the exact same stuff. So as we go through, do you want to sound this or So as we go through, please. Hi, this is Ray with one for a motor vehicle accident. This is for North County PK and PK and Bird Canyon Road. Hi, this is Ray with one for a motor vehicle accident. This is for North County ambulance at the PK and Bird Canyon Road. Come on, Center Six. Um, as we go through, please ask questions. If you think that something I'm saying is not accurate, please challenge me. You all know when other people are back here, I have surely challenged what they're telling me, and I expect you to challenge me. If I can't, if I'm teaching you something and you question it, and I can't back it up with science and statistics or whatever the case, then then I shouldn't be teaching it. So please, by all means, please do challenge anything that that you think or don't understand or doesn't make sense to you. And, uh, so the fire growth stage, everybody recognizes the fire triangle. I don't know, somewhere, somewhere around a decade ago, we went to the fire tetrahedron, which is what additionally? Self-sustainment. Self so, which is kind of a misnomer because we don't need self-sustainment. If you have air, heat, and fuel, can you have an explosive reaction? Absolutely, right? So we don't need self-sustainment. If you get the right air mixture with the right fuel and the right heat, you get boom. You don't actually need the self-sustainment. So fire triangle worked. We just, you know, thought we had to make it better than it was. The modern fire growth curve, I know everybody's seeing this. What temperatures are we reaching in this first plateau? Close to a thousand, right? So close to that flashover, so a little bit less than a thousand. We're almost there, and then what happens? Decay because of what? Air. Ventilation, right? We do not have the ventilation. So it goes back down. We go into somewhat of a decay stage. We drop back down, all the way down, sometimes into that 300 degree range. Then we introduce oxygen, whether it's us, somebody else, and we reach somewhere up, sometimes up to 1400 degrees, right? How long in this study does this take? Up to two minutes. So somewhere somewhere in that minute to two minutes and then to get full flashover. It's gonna depend on if you have a deep seated room, if this is a house, and you have a deep seated room back here, and you open up a ventilation opening here, that's going to change how fast this is versus the fire that's right here and we gave it oxygen and it's already self ended right here. That thing could be there extremely fast. But either way, it's fast. What they were finding was usually about 90 seconds and above. So by the time we open the door, we're crawling in, we're making our push, and now boom, this thing is getting ready to flash. 
So modern fire growth. Are today's fires hotter? Yes. It's a trick question. No, they're not hotter. Fire is the same temperature. Does a flashover occur at a different temperature than it did in, in 1908? No. No, right? So they're not technically hotter, but do they propagate faster? Absolutely. Do they have a much higher BTU release rate? Absolutely. Which is energy, right? How much, how much and how fast energy is produced. What are the limiting factors in a modern growth fire in 90% of the fires? Ventilation. Ventilation. Right? So we, we lack air. So seven-sided size up. Everybody's familiar with the four-sided size up. We do our 360 walk around. So to do a, a true good size up, it's continual. So we don't do our 360 degree walk around and then say, all right, size up is complete. That, that's all we, we do. We need, if we have a basement fire, we need a basement size up. If we have guys going in, that is that, that PAR report, letting the BC know what's going on. And then guys on the roof, the roof report is something that we, um, as an industry, don't generally do. We call for a ventilation cut. We go to the roof. We do ventilation. We don't give an actual roof report. We should be giving a roof report to the battalion chief or the IC so that because if, if, we're, if the BC is on the A side and we don't have a division C and you're going on the C side roof, the BC can't see that. That is that roof report that becomes, hey, the roof is pretty spongy or we've got some fast dark smoke coming out of the roof line now that wasn't here when we came on the side. That's important for that continual size of process and, and how the BC is making decisions. So incipient stage fire. What's our smoke look like? What's our windows and, and heat look like? Laminar smoke, possible condensation on the window. Okay. Laminar smoke, which means what? What is, what is laminar? Lazy. Lazy. All right. So why is it lazy? Not under it's pressure, it's just lifting. It doesn't have pressure? It's not under pressure. It could be under pressure, but not under heat. So heat is what you get rise. So if you have laminar smoke, it could mean two things. If the fire is right here, it means it's not that hot. If the fire is over here, and we get laminar smoke out, what is that telling us? Pressure, right? We, there's volume. We, we filled this space with so much volume, Smoke is coming out, but it's not hot because the fire is way over here. So it's coming out and it's going laminar. So white in color, and then you said uh, moisture on the windows, right? What is moisture? What temperature range does moisture on the windows tell us? Less than 212. Less than 212, right? 212 boils water. That's what we, if, if the streaks are stuck to the window, we have, oh, it's in the next. So haze and moisture. Or less than 212. When we get this, now we boil that water, right? We put it to the window. We're in gross stage. We're over that 212 degrees. What's the next break in reading windows? What's that next temperature that we're looking at? 600 degrees. Is what? When your windows start to crack. So 500 is when you start getting the, the blackened, crazed, cracking. And it's going to depend which fails faster, single. Uh, old windows or new double pane windows? Single double pane. Double pane windows fail faster. We thought when they came out, industry wide, I believe that, that was pretty standard, they were better. They were better windows. What they found is that gas in the windows expands and the window completely fails and falls out. So why why are our fires getting so growing so fast and then running out of oxygen? Because when you get a window failure, the old windows, what did they do? They cracked and pieces fell out, right? When these windows fail, it splits the casing and they fall out. So that's a, somewhere in that 500 degree range. Double and triple pane windows fail and completely fall out. So then you have not a partial open, now you have, whoop, we got 10% ventilation profile immediately falling out. So that's going to be in that 500, we start getting crazing. 600, you start getting complete window failure in all types of windows. So obviously that's full growth. If we're looking at this fire, well, the next one's actually better. So flashover is at, as we know, about 1,100 degrees to the ceiling, which gives us that 500 degree mid wall. We're getting that. When we're on the ground, we're crawling, you pull off your glove, and you get that at about four feet, you get that reaction. You know this thing's about to flash. So we either, one, better put water into the environment, put water on the fire, or get the hell out of there. 
So when we're at full growth, we're talking pressurized, black, rapidly rising smoke, right? That's that smoke that you see that we've all seen it come, you get there and it's just billowing out. That's the column we see when we, when we hit the truck on the way. So when we're at 1,000 degrees there, uh, if it's reached 1,000 degrees in that room, it's going to be self denoted at that point. So looking at reading the building, what is our past, present, and future in this building? Where is the past? To the left. To the left. left. The the floor, floor, one. Floor, one. Floor, one. floor one. Where is the present? Here. And where is the future? Here. Why is the future here? Why do we know that? Or why, why is it here? Windows are vented. What's that? Doors probably closed on the far right. This, there's smoke. I don't know if you can see it. That has smoke in it. Yeah. I, I would say it's open. Right. Exactly. exactly. We know we have membranes. So that's our future. We know where the fire is now. We don't really care where it's been as much, other than for stability issues. But we know that there, this, this looks like not, not a home that we would necessarily have here. It's kind of goofy. But I'm not sure if it's a kind of a split apartment or not. But either way. The fire is going down. There's some sort of connection here, and the fire is, is traveling down there. We know where the fire is going. We know where the flow path is, right? If we got oxygen coming in here, we've got it open. We can look at that two seconds, and we know where that flow path is. It's here, and it's going here. <coughs> so talking about flashover, uh, Ed Hatfield talks about how many firefighters have we been told die in flashover? Tons, right? Firefighters die in flashover. That's what kills us, right? And he says none. Nobody has died in flashover in a residential building because of this. If we crawl into a room and it's a thousand degrees at the ceiling in that room, we feel that through our masks. How many of us continue to go into that room or do we go the other way? We go the other way. So flashover by... Let's see. <coughs> flashover by definition is near simultaneous ignition, blah, 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 in an enclosed area. So a guy that's in a hallway, because that's usually where they find firefighters dead, in the hallway, right? They did not get killed by flashover. They got killed because they were in a flow path or a gas ignition. So half firefighters probably died in a flashover. Yeah, yeah, they probably have. But the concept of we're going to crawl into a flashover and not apply water is probably, I think he's right. We're either going to apply water or we're going to leave. We're not going to sit there when it's a thousand degrees to the ceiling and you can feel that heat through your gear because you know you're going to get burnt at that point. So decay stage. What does this picture tell us? If you're the, if you're the first arriving IC, what, what are the indicators on here that are going to be problematic for us? Is, it, is that another... I, I can't, can't really tell. Left. It's goofy. It's attached somehow. Because okay. if, if you can see it, their fire has came out of here. And obviously, it's here. I so as a first in IC, what is problematic about what, what this is? So right now, if you show up, we're looking at the picture. You know, from the street side, nothing showing. Come around. There's a little bit of smoke. You, you guys probably can't see it real well. And you have this. Why is that problematic for us? Because if you add oxygen, you're going to change. Right. This is a decay stage fire waiting for us to give it oxygen. So, um, is that an unbroken window or what are you? It is. It's all crazed over. It's all crazed over, and then you've got black around it. So, um, Stan Cook talks about missing the past. You, you walk around, you do your walk around, and you miss the past. So this is the past. This is what's happened. These signs, if we don't identify these, this, this is the things that's going to get us in trouble. There was a crew down in Roseburg, Oregon, and they crawled into, they, they showed up on a huge, huge mansion under construction house. And they got there. There was not much showing. But even from the pictures that were taken by people that were just watching the fire, as they went in, um, and Stan actually is the one who, who uh, had these pictures, is you can see this. You can see the past. The fire had already gotten really hot. The windows had held, and it was waiting. And they crawled in. Sorry, my phone's dead. I got everything forward into my... Um, they crawled in. 
It started getting really hot really fast. The officer identified, okay, something's not right here. They got out. As soon as they got out, the whole place lit up. They basically created a backdraft. So same situation. You can see it in the pictures, clear as day around the windows. There's soot standing windows, and there's soot around where the fire or the fire uh, heated those windows up so hot. So our hostile events, rollover, flashover, backdraft, smoke explosion. So talking about being lost in translation, these terms unfortunately mean different things to all of us. What does rollover mean to me and what does it mean to somebody else? are two very different things, and that's because different texts kind of say different stuff, and then you have different types. So rollover that we typically think of is that rollover that's coming off the seat of the fire. It's maybe coming out the door. So that type of rollover is going to be one and a half times the height of the room. So if you have a full growth fire in the corner of an eight foot tall room, you can get 12 feet of uh, rollover off of that. So that's going to be the fire we typically see. We also talk about rollover in the gas ignition, the ghosting of, of the stuff when you come down the hallway and you're 30, 30 feet or 20 feet from an eight foot bedroom, that's not rollover. That's ghosting, which is telling us that that flow path is about to ignite. So what they found is with the flow path stuff, so when we introduce oxygen and the gases is they start mixing. And so that, that point where they come in contact at you know, as we all see, have seen when we lay on the floor and we see that, that uh, oxygen trail go into the fire, at that mid-level point where the smoke is trying to get out and the air is going in, that becomes turbulent and it starts pushing oxygen up into that 1100 degree range. That's when we get those gas explosions. And it sounds pretty common sense, but they didn't, they didn't know that until recently when they did some of the NIST studies that, that that's what was happening way past where the rollover was, why are they getting a, a big ignition 20 feet from the seat of the fire? And that's because they had 1,100 degrees of the ceiling, and they had that mixing, that mingling of gas and air, and the turbulence just pushed that oxygen up. So it depends on how rich it is, how lean it is, and how hot it is. How do we take that out of the equation? Either one. We'll close the room. Penciling the ceiling, yes. Yes, putting water in the environment. So typically we're all taught the penciling concept. And Aaron Fields talks about that, how firefighters have gotten themselves in trouble because we don't see fires like we used to. We used to be able to pencil the ceiling, see that bump, see that change, continue on. That's a veteran call. That is a guy who's seen fire and knows he's getting good bump, he's getting good conversion, moving. But teaching people who don't have that experience, or as we don't see as many fires now, we pencil, we pencil, we move on, we didn't get that gas temperature down, and then, boom, that whole thing ignites. Because now we're pushing the seat, we haven't killed it above us, we've got 1,100 degrees of ceiling behind us, and it all goes. So Aaron talks about when you move down a hallway, when you move through that, that atmosphere, we are taking the heat totally out. We're pushing water. Ceiling, floor, ceiling, floor, ceiling, floor. That's, that's one of the components of nozzle forward, and, and we'll do that not next month, but in September. So we've gone away from Tesla to give it a fog from floor to ceiling? Yeah. Not fog. Not fog. Uh, no, straight stream. So, again, penciling is not wrong, but penciling can get you into trouble. Because if you don't have a really good understanding of water interaction, of, of what you're accomplishing, you can get in trouble that way. So to cover that, you know, instead of working within this spectrum, we've added it to here, you're taking your straight stream and you're moving down the hallway and you're putting water floor to ceiling. You're taking the heat out of that environment as you move. That way, we know nothing behind us is going to ignite. We're taking the temperature all the way down so we can't get those, that, that gas ignition. But it's straight stream, floor to ceiling, sweeping. Water. It used to be we conserved water because we didn't want to cause water damage, right? The modern fires, the, the smoke is so particulate, black-filled crap. If you're putting water in an environment, and this doesn't mean when we go in on a kitchen fire that's barely going and you don't have smoke, that you're going to start, you know, floor to ceiling, we're going to work this thing down the hallway with two and a half and put 500 gallons on before we get there. If you have the environment where you know it's hot, 
you know you've got smoke rolling over your head, now we're going to put water in the environment. We know that that smoke has ruined anything in that room. We're not going to make it worse with water damage in a room that's got smoke four feet down that's full of plastic and all that crap. So why are you using a stray stream instead of a... Wouldn't you be covering more area if, with the fog pattern? Down you, the hallway? You cover more area, but you're going to drop that environment, right? Because you're adding air. Well, and Sam the other day was saying, with the fog, it's, you're getting particles, you know, it's broken up. So a lot of it's getting evaporated. So they're actually kind of going to a straight stream, and they're saying that myth of you're going to dump everything down on top of you, steam burn. They're, they're going away from that. They're saying get a straight stream on the seat of the fire. The other and thing is, what what is I what get is that, but if you're going down a hallway, what I'm saying is if you're trying to cool down the area to where you're going, Aren't you covering more area with a fog pattern going down? A no, the particles. Because it's, it's, it's broken. It's broken. A lot of no, air. Josh is right. You are covering more area, but when you introduce air and, and those particles, and, and that's we, that's part of this lecture, we'll go over that whole concept. But you're going to drop that environment. We know when we add that, even a 30 degree fog, the environment drops, right? You get that immediate where everything comes down. So if we do that moving down a hallway, we've taken it, we can usually manage that, but we've taken the viability away from our patients completely, right? If we drop that smoke down and intermix it at the ground level, if anybody's in that hallway, we've, we've just killed them, essentially. So you can cover more area that way, yes, but you can accomplish the same thing by cooling and keeping your environment good so we can see and we can keep it viable for patients. The other thing, Josh, that makes sense. with that fog stream, you're barely touching out there. By the time you get conversion and everything else, you're barely touching out there 8 to 10 feet in front of your nozzle. With with a, a combination tip nozzle, you're only reaching out there about 30 feet. And so you'd rather keep keep it away from you at that 30 foot level so you can see the, the reaction of it instead of keeping it two feet off your, your, uh, your helmet. Yeah, Jason's dead on. It was him. It was him. Fire Suspicious down. looking character just left. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. fire marshal. Mm -hmm. like right mm -hmm. sure. Justin Lockton. Sorry, when you embed videos into the PowerPoint, which is how you're supposed to do them, so that when you guys pull them up on shift, you, you can watch them without having to go to YouTube, you take the availability. Yeah. But basically, it, it kind of shows the rollover process, which I think we've all seen. But what I really want to show is the attack that they put when they put water on it, how it kind of like what Jason was was referencing, how it affects the fire. <laughs> Captain Obvious. So what, in this scenario, what is the number one influence on this fire growth? This, this scenario right here, I know this is obviously staged. New furniture? You have a big open wall. Fuel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ventilation profile, right? You have a 100 square foot room, or 300 square foot room, well, 100 square feet of ventilation profile. That's accelerated fire growth. So this thing is going to grow faster than, obviously, if we just had a door feeding it. So you can see once you get going, it immediately goes to roll over and flash over. So there's that myth, or something that's been taught. Fires, modern fires double in size every two minutes. Is that accurate? No. Why? Because with the new products that we have, it can accelerate so much faster. So different products propagate faster in ventilation, right? If this little window is open versus this, that's going to totally change the propagation of the fire. So that, that is a, a misnomer in that there's too many variables to say fires double in size every two minutes. With all things being normal, two fires will double 
with the same ventilation profile in two minutes. But several times because of the fact that you have such a huge ventilation profile. If you were putting that down in a narrow corridor where you were bottlenecking all of the, that uh, steam and everything else, they would have dropped a lot more. Even faster, yeah. Yeah, yeah it would have been that much worse. Do you know how hard yeah. it is to see all those telltale signs of impending flashover with the off-gassing of the carpet when you're actually in a, a fire? It's so hard. I mean, you got water rolling down your mask. It's dark. Right, um, you it's, can't see all that. Yeah, no, it, it's a, that's a good point. It's unlikely that you're going to be able to probably visualize those things. But what we need to be thinking about is we're measuring heat temperatures as we're moving, whether that's pulling off your glove, you're monitoring with your tick, or you're putting water into the environment and seeing if you get steam conversion or water. You know, is it coming back to the floor as water, or are you putting a burst up in the ceiling? And uh, you know, you're flowing water, you're moving, and nothing's coming down. We know it's a thousand degrees to the ceiling, probably, if the, those things are happening. So, yeah, we're probably not going to see the off gassing like you would in a, a sterile environment. So, we talked about that. So, we all know what a backdraft is. But by definition, an event caused by a fire resulting from rapid introduction of oxygen. So keep that in mind as we go to the next video. I'm sure a lot of people have seen this video before. So a live fire training in 2004, they got a fire burning in the Charlie Delta corner. So they send in a crew. You can see it's kind of early to mid growth right now. So are we in early or mid-growth fire right now? <coughs> so mid-growth, we're getting some changes. So watch how long. So right there we would say, all right, we've got a problem, right? We need to readjust our tactics if we're not putting one on the fire right now. Watch how long it is, 9 minutes, 55 seconds. You would think things are going to go bad pretty fast, but they actually don't. Does not qualify as a gas ignition, not a backdrop, because they've already opened the door and introduced oxygen. We'll talk, watch the whole video first. All right, still 
we're getting those indicators that we've got increased heat, we've got increased velocity, right? So again, we're another two minutes later. So you can see they're spraying some water back there. They're actually just sweeping the eaves. They're not putting water on the fire at all. So we're still growing. We're all kind of going, okay, what's this thing going to, something bad is going to happen, right? It does, but not the way we think it would, if you haven't seen the video. Hey, let's get a PPV fan in here and get some of the smoke out of here, all right? So count the seconds from the time they launch it. So boom, it fires. They adjust it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven seconds. Boom. There she goes. They burned a couple guys pretty bad. They all lived. A couple of them uh, ended up in the ICU. I think it retired one of them. I remember it. So when that fire started, with, when, hot, when smoke started rolling out of the front of the house, and we knew things needed to change, right? Something had to change or it was getting bad. We, in this video, they still had a lot of time, right? Nothing happened that fast until they introduced the fan. So, what is this? A rollover, a gas ignition, or a backpack? What's that? Poor decision. Poor decision, yes. I call it gas ignition. There's not really, there's not a right answer. It depends on who you ask. By definition, they introduced oxygen into what wasn't necessarily an oxygen deficient, but an oxygen stable environment. They introduced that high flow, high pressure oxygen, not high flow, not in percentage wise, but high pressure oxygen in and three or seven seconds and they get full, full explosion. That was an explosion of smoke. So it's kind of a gas ignition because what it did ignite, it ignited the gases. And so you can tell by that video exactly what they found is that speed, that velocity of the auction going in, intermingled, and boom, lit it up. So the question is, if we don't know if this fire was self-dented out of the way.